How about this? Look, that's fun. I'm trying to help you out here. Come on. She's cool. Look at her. I don't want that. Okay, well then we're not getting any toys today. Joe? Joe? I love that this that this movie kind of takes the idea of a Western and, and leans into some of the iconography of it, but tells this very modern story about identity. So I, I wondered at what point in the development of this did, did the Western seem like the idea of vessel for the story that you wanted to tell? Well, when I first started writing it, I just, I set it in a part of Montana that I spent time in as a kid. Um, so I knew I wanted to set it there. And I wrote like, the first scene I wrote was just a father and son on horseback. And I was like, this is so, at first I was like, oh, this is strange that I'm writing this, but it, you know, I, I was curious and they, they spoke to me in some way, they were running from something and they were, you know, outlaws of some sort. And I just let the story kind of reveal itself to me. So it really started Western-y in my mind. And then I think, you know, I was sort of like meditating on like, who are the modern outlaws? Like, hmm. oh, you know, like a mentally ill dad and his his transgender son. So it really started with this image. I love that. That's so yeah. fascinating. I want to shift gears and ask you, Jillian. I mean, I'm such a fan of your comedic work over the years. I think you're hilarious. But it was really cool to see you do something that leans a little more dramatic. And I wonder kind of what, what convinced you to dive into this project? Uh, Anna and I have the same agent and I got a hold of her script and I fell in love with it. I mean, I was just, I, I thought it was so beautiful and touching and I loved the message behind it. And I thought that her characters were very meaty. They, they were multidimensional and, and it was something that I would never normally be asked to do. And, and I, I talked with Anna and just sort of gave her a spiel about why I, play, I should play Sally. And she was lovely and accepting of that. And, um, and we went forward, but I was, I was nervous about it. I was really, uh, it's, it's, it's a definitely a different script than I'm, I'm used to being set. There is still a lot of, I think, comedy in this story. I love that you kind of find moments for levity. I mean, there's, there's a fart joke with beans, like, you know, <laughs> like, I'm so glad that we, right. we have that in the story as well. Why did that seem like something you wanted to include? Well, I kind of can't help it. I think, <laughs> you know, some, of, some of the, I usually write stuff that's either like comedic dramas or dramatic comedies. It's always sort of like in the middle for me. Um, but I definitely, you know, that was something I was very aware of is, it's also just like, who wants, I don't know, for me, like I watch a humorless movie and it just feels like not real life. You know, I think that life is full of like all the colors and textures of, you know, from humor to tragedy or whatever. And they're, you know, finding the places where they intersect is really interesting to me. Um, and, and that's why it was so important for me to find great actors who mm -hmm. can do both, you know, Jillian and Steve, especially, um, you know, they, they have serious acting chops and they're grounded, dynamic human beings, um, but they understand what's, what's funny. And that actually, that can be a very, and if it's not, it's not jokes, really, you know, it's sort of more like comedy that comes from behavior is sort of what I'm always more interested in. You know, you mentioned a dynamic cast. I have to bring up Anne Dowd because like, what yes. a perfect human. <laughs> what she can you tell is me about a perfect Anne? human. Yeah. <laughs> she is like, I, like I'll email her still. She's, she is like a queen. I just love her so much. She's, <laughs> she's so generous. Um, she's really fun to work with. She works really hard and she just has this way about her she's, she's I don't know like, how, to, how to say this like she did she would like push she really like held my feet to the fire <laughs> all the time and but in this way that I thought was like so funny and fun you know like it was she really really w takes her characters and being loyal to them so so seriously um, but she was, she was just a blast to work with. And I know Jillian loves her too. <laughs> I mean, I, I adore her. Mm -hmm. And the cool thing about her too, is I think she was only on set like a couple of days before I was and everywhere she'd walk on set, she would be like, Martin, how are you? And how is Sally, your wife? And how is Cynthia, your daughter and your youngest pup? 
um, Echo? How are all of them? And I'm like, how do you know everything about everyone? It's <laughs> such, she's so invested in, in like life. Like she's so interested in characters and knowing people and making everyone on the crew and the cast feel welcome because she knows, I'm sure because like, we all kind of know what it's like to be like newer on set and how scary that can be. So mm -hmm. she, she was just so welcoming and giving and I, I would work with her again and again. <laughs> that is amazing to hear. She's so wonderful. And it's funny to think, I think if folks didn't know her before Handmaid's Tale, they maybe have a certain idea of her, but she's like obviously so warm and so sweet. <laughs> Yeah, and she's got a really an amazing range. I also mm. love her in um, Hereditary. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> she's so great. She's both horrifying and like hysterical in that. Now I don't know how yes. you pull that off, but. <laughs> yes. Um, while we're talking about cast members who are amazing, I, I mean, Sasha just truly blew me away. And I wondered, I mean, could, could you tell me about how you came across Sasha? Yeah, I worked with my casting director, Edie Belasco, who had cast Transparent. And um, <laughs> I was like, Edie, you must know all of the transgender boy actors who are 11 years old. And she was like, I know no one. Because <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, it's kids are growing up all the time. But um, we, we started with the sort of usual channels of, you know, cast, sending out casting breakdowns and whatnot, and then coupled that with grassroots outreach through nonprofits. Glad consulted with me on the film from script to casting to like, we're still talking to Nick Adams now, who's the transgender media consultant there. Um, but yeah, when we found, you know, I met with kids from all over the country over Zoom, which pre-COVID was actually really weird. Now mm -hmm. it just is life. And I we were really lucky that Sasha was actually based in the LA area. So I had seen some tapes of him and I was like blown away. And then I was able to meet with him in person and, and work with him. And it was just, you know, there was no doubt that he was the right kid to play this role. I love him. I love him so much. I, I... I saw a picture of him and Steve, like the two of them as little cowboys, like in the beginning, <laughs> shooting. I think Anna sent me a picture um, on my phone and I was like, oh, this is our family. Like he kind of looks like he could be both Steve's kid and my kid. And then when I checked in, I got to the hotel, like the first day I met him immediately and we sat down and they were having, he was having dinner with um, his whole family. And I just got to know like the, his family and everyone, it was, they were so welcoming and loving and it was really hard kind of going into these scenes and having to be sort of um, on this other side of mm -hmm. Sally. Like this, this, at the beginning of the film, she, she can kind of be perceived as almost a villain, which she doesn't end up being, but uh, it, those scenes were very tough for me because I just was so mm -hmm. deeply in love with little Sasha. And I'm so excited for him to continue on his journey acting. And this was the first thing he ever got to do. So lovely to yeah. be with him. What did it mean for the two of you to work with Steve? I mean, have you been fans of his for a while? Yeah, I mean, I, I've loved and admired Steve's work for so long. And, and, you know, of course, I think so many of us are used to seeing him as like, purely a comedic actor you know he so often gets cast that way but uh I, when I saw him in Rescue Dawn mm. that Werner Herzog movie I was like whoa I mean he was like he like starved himself for the role and is like it's so intense and I was like oh my god this guy is such an incredible actor and you know I really needed someone for the role who could be playful and jump on a horse like it wasn't anything <laughs> it's actually like a very specific group of people who can actually do that in a real and organic way you know um and Steve is all those things like he lives on a Kentucky and on a horse farm in Kentucky hmm. and he's just like a very you know well-rounded incredibly hard-working actor and he was like incredible to work with it was just the work that he put in in prep hmm. just really sung the second we would start rolling 
Yeah, this was my first time meeting him. And actually, I don't think I've ever told him the story. And Anna, I don't know if you know this story, <laughs> but I, when I was younger, my parents for Christmas got me the beginning of a drum kit. So they got me a, like a, a drum and a cymbal. And I got it because I loved that thing you do. And I <laughs> oh my God. And play that one song. And cut to, we're in Whitefish, Montana, and I'm sitting across from Steve Zahn, and I start talking to him about that thing you do, and he starts singing one of the songs, and then we're both singing to each other, and I'm like, my dreams have all come true. So <laughs> I, I always thought that Steve was so, so smart and so brilliant with his comedy. I think like his timing is impeccable. So I was, I was a big fan of his and, and really excited when he was attached to this film. And, and, and now he's, he's a friend, which is lovely. <laughs> no, 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 no. She said that she is a boy. Oh God. That she feels like she's in the wrong body. Like she's like an alien living in someone else's body. Like that Body Snatchers movie. Like the Body Snatchers movie, Troy. 